Final Four Saturday continues, and only three teams still can hold on to the dream. Next up, Michigan State and North Carolina with the winner taking on Illinois Monday night. Will it be an all Big Ten final for the championship? Or how about the top two teams most of the season? Will it be Illinois, North Carolina, or Illinois, Michigan State? Again, welcome back, friends. Jim Dance, Billy Packer, Great. and one more to go. And Billy, how about Michigan State coming out of that Austin Regional and that double overtime thriller? What do you see out of the Spartans here tonight? Very experienced basketball team. Four seniors that have been around a long time, led by this man here, Alan Anderson. He had a game this year where he never missed a shot, either from the field or the foul line, scoring 28 against Wisconsin. And here's a man coming on so strong late, seven of the last 14 games. He has been in double figures. And when you start talking about coming off the bench, how would you like to come off the bench with experience? Two seniors, Hill and Torbert, both have made all Big Ten in their careers a big punch off that bench. All right, Billy, North Carolina won the Syracuse Regional. How about the heels tonight? Well, one of the things you've got to look for is a guard that matches up with anybody in the country. Raymond Felton, as good as there is, playing that point position, he must stay on the floor. And of course, as a freshman, Marvin Williams has got to be probably the best freshman player in the country. And the man that has been a load for everybody in this tournament, leading the tournament in both scoring and rebounding, John May, the All-American. Michigan State, North Carolina, coming up next on CBS. Carolina something on, on something he's virtually ignored the entire season transition defense he said most of the teams we face run half court so we don't have to worry about it but with Michigan State being one of the deepest teams UNC's faced all year they like to run the ball up the court and push it and Williams said our greatest challenge will be getting back quick enough to counter their pace one other quick note Williams told me he had a little heart to heart with Raymond Felton about not getting in foul trouble as he has in this tournament he said Raymond sets the tone for us on both ends and if we want to win we kind of need him in the game. Absolutely. Thank you, Bonnie. And the Tar Heels are back on a floor at the Final Four. We'll be right back. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the men's national semifinals is sponsored by the new singular Monster Miller and by Pontiac. On behalf of the NCAA, welcome to tonight's Division I men's basketball national semifinal game between the champions of the Austin Regional, the Michigan State University Spartans, and the champions of the Syracuse Regional, the Tar Heels of the University of North Carolina. Let's meet tonight's starting lineups. At forward for Michigan State, a 6'6 senior from Minneapolis, Minnesota, number 15, Alan Anderson. At forward for North Carolina, a 6'9 senior from Cleveland, Ohio, number 21, Jawad Williams. At center for Michigan State, a 6'11 junior from Rochester, Minnesota, number 40, Paul Davis. At forward for North Carolina, a 6'4 junior from Asheville, North Carolina, number 32, Rashad McCants. At guard for Michigan State, a 6'5 junior from Detroit, Michigan, number 13, Maurice Egger. At center for North Carolina, a 6'9 junior from Bloomington, Indiana, number 42, Sean Bay. At guard for Michigan State, a 6'4 sophomore from Maywood, Illinois, number three, Shannon Brown. At guard for North Carolina, a 6'5 senior from West Palm Beach, Florida, number five, Jackie Manuel. 
at guard for Michigan State, a six foot freshman from Grand Rapids, Michigan, number 12, Drew Knightson. And a guard for North Carolina, a 6'1 junior from Lana, South Carolina, number two, Raymond Felton. And introducing the head coaches, the head coach of Michigan State is Tom Izzo. And the head coach of North Carolina is Roy Williams. He's back again, third time in the last four years. Fifth time overall, but the first directing his alma mater, Roy Williams. All right, Billy, let's go through your game analysis for this one. Well, the insiders, Paul Davis and Sean May, two fellows that have played extremely well of late. You'd say that this would be one-sided for May, but Davis did a great job against Sheldon Williams last week. The Glassmen, both of these teams, terrific rebounders. In the case of North Carolina, 7.8 advantage. Michigan State, 7-3. There is going to be a battle on the glass. Can anybody get control? The non-starter stars, we've got Kelvin Torbert, we've got Mark. And Williams. Both of these guys are extremely good coming off the bench. Williams probably has the potential to have a big, big game. And Neitzel or Nightmare? We're asking a freshman who's all Big Ten freshman who's had 13 starts to go up against the All-American Felton, who has 12.7 points a game and 235 assists. A tough job for the freshman. It's not that Neitzel scores a lot of points, though, Billy. You're just probably looking at it from will he commit a lot of turnovers absolutely you're talking about freshmen against a very wily veteran our game is brought to you in hd tv by harris corporation the world leader in broadcast systems for high definition television robert donato reggie greenwood randy mccall the officials for this one as michigan state in the green unis and here comes north carolina in the home whites is the better seed a one seed against a five seed and they meet for the right to take on illinois monday night for the championship jawad williams paul davis and the jump goes to michigan state is that matchup felton and knights straight man to man by north carolina Knightsville kid in the tournament, three to one ratio, assist to turnovers. Been very steady, moving down the stretch in that double overtime win against Kentucky last Sunday. Anderson, he'll drive in, no whistle. He thought he was fouled, and Jawad Williams comes out muscling with it. McCants quickly to May, turn around. Didn't have the ball in his hands on that shot, Jim. Fine catch, probably should have brought it back out. What kind of pace are we going to see here tonight? Oh, I think this is going to be a much faster pace than we saw in the first game. Nice speed inside. Anderson gives it over to Ager, and he is fouled on the way up. Well, the Spartans, again out of the Austin Regional through Old Dominion in the tough one. Vermont, the Syracuse killer. And then the one and the two. They beat Duke for the first time for Tom Izzo, and they beat Kentucky in the most memorable well, one of the most memorable games of this tournament. Illinois and Arizona, Michigan State and Kentucky. There have been a number of them. And our uh, fans voted earlier. Wake Forest and West Virginia is the best of the lot so far. First one goes for Ager. Ager had a good outing against Vermont with 19 points, 7 for 13, and then came back with 21 big ones against Kentucky. Well, May was the one who fouled him. So a quick one on the Carolina center. And remember, Sheldon Williams for North Carolina, I mean for Duke, fouled out against this Michigan State just a week ago. Posting up is Williams. Jawad puts it up off the glass. He has struggled of late with his shot, but that was a hard earn too. There's Hager getting down the court, beating Lynch. Beating Manuel down the floor. Good job by Michigan State to push it before North Carolina was ready to be back on defense. And Manuel called for the block foul. That is something we saw often last week in both the Duke and then the Kentucky matchup for Michigan State. They get it out quickly, and Ager and Shannon Brown can fly. And they can finish, too, Jim. That's why they're fearless when they go down the court. And if you're nice, so you don't mind getting the ball. They'll take it to the basket. Davis, that pass deflected. McCants got a hand on it. He's up ahead. Neitzel trying to defend with the left hand. McCants was losing control of it. Just put oh, it up. Oh, Look at Felton rolling to pick up the rock. Well, McCants has got his shoelaces untied 
And he better be careful because he could trip out there. And look at this. He was in a he was in a knot right there into that Michigan State defense. And there's Ager again flying into that basket. How about this pace? Neitzel coming off the screen, set by Davis, hits the jumper. But this is the pace I think that North Carolina would rather have than with Michigan State going this fast up and down the floor. You're talking about North Carolina, the highest scoring team in the land this year. 31 and 4. That's our heel. Nice for giving up a lot of size right here on that matchup. Back out to the corner with the three. Jawad off with that one and comes out the night side. Nice does a good job keeping the ball on the floor. He's an excellent dribbler. Early on, though, this season, he was dribbling and not going anywhere. Now he understands how to get that ball in a good active position. Brandon Brown with the ball, the most outstanding player of the Austin Regional. Bank, no. Tipped around, out to May. May, the leading rebounder in this tournament through four games. That was some hands by May, and then have the presence of mind. There's a bad pass. May not in position. Well, the Carolina Road to St. Louis through Oakland, Iowa State, Villanova, one point heart stopper, and then Wisconsin by six. Well, they took out the third place team in the Big Ten in the regional final as Chris Hill comes in for Michigan State, the senior, and Marvin Williams and Scott in for North Carolina. So I think both coaches realizing they do have deep benches. They're going to go to that bench early because the pace of this game is the kind of thing that you're not going to be playing any 40 minutes out here. Well, the formula is set, Billy. This is a team, North Carolina, to beat the three-team out of the Big Ten in the regional final, taking on the second-place team today. If they win, they'll take on the first-place team on Monday night. Three straight. And Davis, a follow-up trend. Foul again on Carolina, and it's going to be on Felton. And there's Trannon. That's a great trade-off if you're Michigan State. Trannon goes after a rebound. Felton, who's a tremendous leaper, but not strong enough to go up there with Trannon. And that is the kind of foul that Roy Williams did not want to see on his guard. Normally, Felton, with that leaping ability, you'll just take it away from somebody up there. But Trannon is so strong. We talked about him, Jim, as a football player and a receiver. Really went up there well for that ball. Good touch as well, Trannon, who was uh, more highly recruited as a basketball player than football, but uh, another two-sport star at Michigan State. Only shooting 52% from the line, but you, you, know, know it. you know why? Football muscles take a while to get down into basketball muscles, and I think his stroke now much smoother than it was earlier in the year. Saw that in Austin also, so yep. he hits two. And this Michigan State, a great free throw shooting team from top to bottom. Felton, way outside, and Davis has the rebound. Nice block out by Davis. Here goes Ager. In for the block. And Felton couldn't defend him because he's been told not to get in foul trouble. Michigan State doing a great job pushing that ball. May has it bad and loose. That was Hill coming in to help out. And Torbert comes away with it. His first action, the senior. Hill. And Davis thought about putting it up, but May closed in on him. Turn around instead. Too strong. And they hammer May. But see, Trannon is a guy who can afford to go in there and get four or five fouls. Terrific dunk on the inside. You see Felton gave up on the play. Trannon called for that one. He knows it. And when you when you start talking about Torbert and Brown and Ager and Anderson, you talk about guys that can finish on the break. Anderson right back in. Boy, was he clutched down the stretch. Hitting four free throws in the last 12 seconds of the second overtime to put that one away as Davis sits down. It's interesting here. Brown on Felton right now. Brown, a good enough athlete to stay with him. He's got plenty of size. Screen inside trying to get Williams open. And it's Marvin Williams. Jawad is sitting down. McCants looking on Hill. Step back. Nope. Yep. Oh. Get right off the front of the rim. That well, shooter's touch that he has. What you'd like to see about McCants, he's certainly back to 100% now. Was out with that intestinal disorder, but he wants the ball today, and he's really taking it to the basket. Good sign for North Carolina. Brandon on some screen. Brown. Another good screen. Brown floater. Tipped around, and Carolina, I believe, touched it last. 
I well, didn't see the signal, but we got a timeout under 16. Thousands of years ago, insects ruled the, the earth, and now they want it back. It's locusts invading CBS on Sunday, uh, April 24th. Jim, these two teams have met in a Final Four once before. Yeah, it was, and it was a else. Final Four that history will never, never repeat. And it was right three, here in the state of Missouri. Three overtime games, I mean, two overtime, two three overtime games North Carolina played. The first one in that Final Four against this very Michigan State team. Great Johnny Green in that ball game. Imagine winning three overtime games, and that's when the games were played back to back. No day in between. Yep. Carolina beat them 74-70 in triple overtime, and then only able to turn right around and do it again against Will Chamberlain in Kansas in the final over in Kansas City, Missouri. Anderson into the paint, and May trying to influence that, and he does. He did. Good job by May. Felt bouncing it over, and a hand in there by Michigan State. And so far, North Carolina has misjudged the athleticism and quickness of Michigan State. Spartan ball. I ought to point out, North Carolina Jim has faced a 16 seed, a 9, a 5, a 6, and a 5. So they haven't faced any of those 1, 2, 3s. Obviously, they couldn't face a 1 in their own region, but they have not faced the 2, 3, 4 type teams so far. And Michigan State right now is showing a little bit more athletic than what maybe North Carolina has seen. Into Davis. Marvin Williams defending, and Davis able to get the hoop. Good job by Michigan State to go inside to the big man who is coming on really, really strong. Great game against Duke. David Noel has checked in for the heels for the 34, and it remains North Carolina ball. What do you see here in the early action with both teams on the floor, your early indicator? My early indicator is that Michigan State's playing much stronger, particularly off the boards, and they look much quicker going to the basket. Great man to man. Hill now on Felton. Staying off Felton. Looks like he wants to give Felton a shot. Felton's a good shooter. Lob, and they're able to get it with McCants. Felton and McCants. Over, screen from behind, and right over the top. McCants only six foot four, but can really stop. Felton's got to be careful. The hand checks out front. A little pick and roll action. Down low, Davis. Block. Blocked from behind by McCants. Felton, look at that pass. Noel puts it down. Now, there's the first time that North Carolina really got off on that break that they're so patented with, and that's why they're the number one scoring team in the country. When they can go that full 94 feet, they're really effective. Love the pass by Felton. Davis, baseline, short this time, Miss Marvin Williams. Hits ahead, Felton would like to push that ball again, and here he comes. Trying to pass. squeeze it in there to Jawad Williams, and Davis intercepts. Up ahead to Torbert. Lob on this end, and it doesn't go. Underneath, Anderson, no whistle. This time there is one, and it's on the Spartans. Look out, look out, a little uh, heated exchange here. And the freshman getting a little hot inside. Look at the pass, the bounce pass, just fired in there, absolutely on the mark. Two things you need here, Jim. You need a good pass, but you need a guy that knows how to catch a ball as well. Noel was an outstanding pass receiver, football player, and here you see McCants going way up above everybody, right behind the defense. So far, May has not been a factor in this ball game. Let's see if North Carolina now in the half-court set starts to get the ball to the man that's been their horse. Knights will back in, Torbert out for Michigan State. Of course, the common thing in those two highlights was Felton. And there's May, good job by Davis again. You notice how many times Ager and Brown get the ball on the wing, they get ready to turn that corner. Davis steps in, dumps it over, Tranen. And that one's read by the Tar Heel defense. Melvin Scott's first action. Jawad Williams 
hits the top of the three. Top good, of the key three. Good job. He had Davis on the outside. He knew he really couldn't handle him out there. Davis looking like he's got a I mean, Williams looking like he's got a lot of confidence, Jim, and he's been not shooting well in this tournament so far. Ager, too strong, had the open look, but it's Davis. Ager with the lay-in, too strong. I'll tell you, Davis in this tournament with offensive rebounds, but unable to get a conversion. Williams, not a second time. That was a good job by training. Came out and got a little piece of that ball at the right time. Lob high, Ager, beautiful. Lays it in. <laughs> we see guys on both ends of the floor that can go, go above that rim. Trannon with his second. Got him with the shoulder. And that's what Felton does so well. But again, Trannon's a guy that you can afford to give up some fouls with if you're Michigan State. That basket right there ended a seven-point run by North Carolina. Tar Heels, one up. Well, Darren Williams and the Illini have just come back into the arena, taking a little bit of the second semifinal. And there's Luther Head. What a second half he had. You know, that game was 50 to 49 with 10 minutes to play, and Illinois closed at 22 to 8. And I'll tell you something else Darren Williams did. He scored the first basket of the game in the opening seconds. He scored the last basket of the game in the closing seconds, and no hoops in between, but nine assists and controlled the floor. McCants right back to May with the interior passing. It leads to Williams climbing the rim. Boy, you love big guys that have great hands, and May knew exactly how to deliver. Williams off to a very good start, Jim, and that spells good things for Roy Williams because he has played without any confidence here the last couple of weeks. He already has seven points. Melvin Scott mixing it up, and they call it on Neitzel. So Melvin Scott forces it back for the Tar Heels. There is Gerard Williams with a good dunk. Look at those hands by May. Good anticipation that his teammate would be open inside. Gerard Williams will sit down. He has really played well so far. And he'll get his namesake, Martin Williams, coming right in behind him. Not much fall off there. You know, he hit that three, Gerard Williams. He was 0 for 7 from 3 in the last three games. So he certainly has the feeling going here in the early action. Sean May trying to back in and comes up short on a half hook. As Drew Namick was defending, he's come in for the first time for State, number 34. So far, May has not gotten anything to fall, but that time he used that upper body of his so well to create some space to get that shot off. Marvin Williams called for his first. Felton returns to the floor. See a lot of movement with both benches today, Jim, and we expected that because they're both extremely deep. I think we've seen here today in that first game, the Michigan State fan, fans were cheering on Illinois, and they're now getting the return, as that one rattles out for Ager. And the Big Ten fans sticking together here in St. Louis. Good job for the yep. weak side. And look at Knightson. They get ahead. Brown lays it in. Great job by Brown. Anticipation for the weak side. I think they think that May can really score here. And yeah, he does. Good job by May on the inside, and good job by North Carolina to recognize it. Jim, let me put something in perspective in regard to what May is doing in this tournament. He leads in both scoring and rebounding in the tournament. The last guy to do that was Danny Manning at 88. Other guys that have done that, Cornbread Maxwell, Elvin Hayes, Jerry Chambers, Bill Bradley, my partner, Len Chappell, Jerry West. Can you imagine Jerry West leading the, the, the tournament in rebounding and that? scoring? Amazing, isn't it? Six foot four, known as a guard. Back in those days, he could jump center and play anywhere he wanted to. Well, that shows the company that, that Sean May is keeping these days is Torbert is back out, so is Jawad Williams, and you can get complete Final Four coverage. Only at CBSSportsLine.com. And you know, Jim, out of all those guys I mentioned, you know one thing uh, that's really strange? Only one guy played on the championship team out of that group, and that was Danny Manning. The only guy. And isn't it amazing, like, Kareem never led the tournament in scoring and rebounding. Bill Walton never led the tournament scoring and rebounding. Of course, they won the championship. Yeah, they got the championships. <laughs> May sits. Good screen by Davis. Yep. Davis is back on. Hager with another dunk. Well, Hager and Brown have really ripped off coming off of those corners. Felton quickly up ahead. Easy. The Kansas corner. Yes. Well, right now, 
you don't see an indication that either team has somebody that's coming up cold like Garcia was in the first ball game. Key players are making big shots. McCants with nine. Talking about key players. McCants on Torbert. Torbert's going to take him baseline. That's Davis. He can fire it from out there, but this one doesn't drop. And it's Jawad Williams playing big. Davis reach around and able to get it over oh. to Neitzel. Foul that time, and Neitzel gets away. Neitzel jumper in front of the rim, and again, Jawad Williams clears. Felt spin move, lost control of it back to state. Jawad Williams had McCants wide open, but didn't see him before he threw it out. Felt not having a real good ball handling game for him. Namick back, Anderson out, Melvin Scott for Carolina checks in, and Bo Brackus for Michigan State, a fifth-year senior, is coming on the floor. He's the only one of the Final Four squads who had ever actually been on a Final Four floor. He was a redshirt back in 2001 when Michigan State made it to the uh, Final Four, but he did not play. Again, redshirt. Hill, three shot here. Yep. And it's going to be on Carolina over the back. And a whole bunch of Wad Williams. Hey, Jim, right now, taking a look at Felt. He's had, obviously, a great, great career at North Carolina. Led the ACC in assists. But he had two games this year where he had eight turnovers. One, that game that they lost in Durham, and one against Georgia Tech. He's got to protect the ball much better than he's done so far in this first half. And I said that was a big shot for Hill before. This is another guy that needs to gain some confidence if he's going to be productive from the outside. Torbett over Manuel. Good short range jump shooter. May with the great hands again up ahead to Scott. Step into the basket. Felt. Davis. Davis closed in on him. Not a good decision by Felton to put that shot up, knowing that the shot blocker was late waiting on him. You see Felton coming in, he beats one man, but he has to know Davis is waiting to get a piece. That's Manuel reaching in for his second. A play like that, Jim, would have been good for Felton to keep that dribble alive, go right under, come back out the other side, and probably would have had a play. Shuttling in other players now, David Noel back for North Carolina, and for the first time, Quinton Thomas, the freshman point guard, as Felton is taken out. All 20 of the Carolina points have come from frontline players, nothing out of the backcourt. Count McCants is a frontline player. That's Torbert again. All Michigan State with that rebound. Davis is taking some of those short jumpers, tries to get it, hits it. Another push inside. To count the basket. Is that going to be Torbert? I haven't seen an indication who the foul's on. It might have been Torbert. It's actually no, it's, Melvin Scott of North Carolina. How about that? So the basket counts and State gets possession. Well, hold on. That's a one-on-one. -on -one. That's the seventh on North Carolina. So that'll send State to the line. Torbert to the line. And any time you send this team to the line, you're sending just great production. Here you see the shot. Push on the inside. And it was just a push by the arm underneath the basket. One-on-one -on -one for Torbert. Corbett, the number two free throw shooter in the Big Ten. So you have Anderson, I mentioned this last week. Anderson, the number one foul shooter in the Big Ten. Torbert, number two. Shannon Brown, number three. And Maurice Ager, number five. So some lineup, no matter where you go, you put Michigan State on the line, you're in some trouble. Looking for a clarification over on the side with that last free throw by Torbert. I'm going to go back to the Kentucky game. They've now... It's 16 straight free throws. They hit the big ones in that important second overtime. Well, Jim, on the year, 77%. I think they think Bosaka should have been the free throw shooter. Did you see him get pushed out by Scott? The foul was on Scott. And Scott was not, and Torbett wasn't anywhere near it. Watch. Let's take a look. Watch it, Bo Krakus oh, right there. The absolutely, absolutely. Torbert, and that's why I thought the foul was called on Torbert because it, it, that's, the, that's the area, and they... They're going to take the point yeah. off the board. This is a correctable error. Right, the wrong man. Now, here, here's Bogracus, who's actually over on the bench. He was taken out of the game. So Torbert gets off the line. He shot for the wrong shooter. Bogracus will come back into the ball game. Now, let's look at the trade-off right there. Bogracus is a 69% free throw shooter. He's only taken 13 free throws on the year. So 
the Bogracus will face the one and one. They took the point away, back down to 20 to 18. And the biggest shots this man ever made in his life is that three-pointer that beat Kentucky down in Lexington and goes long. Davis gets it and could score. Yep, still a four-point play anyway. You, you end up with it. Torbett made the second one. But Davis, again, offensive glass. He had seven against Duke, six against Kentucky, two in the early going here. May, good double down by Hill. May, turn around, he's starting to get it going. Well, they're taking a chance right now in regard to trying to handle May off the bench with Naming. And that's just to go ahead and occupy some time. If he commits the fouls, it keeps Davis out of foul trouble. Davis over May. Tipped up by Bogracus. And Namick has it swatted away by Noel. Michigan State's getting on that glass, Jim. Thomas, not like Belton, is not going to take it. Williams wide open out that. He does not hit one in the last three games in the NCAA's 0 for 7. He's already hit a couple in this one. And 10 for the game. Corbett with a three. Unable to match it. Michigan State with Gracchus. That's the third time he's kept it alive on the inside. Hill will drive on Scott at the open lane. Put back, yes. Again, they sweep the offensive glass. Michigan State just cleaning up on the rebounding. May has it stripped by Hill. And Davis gets it back over to him. Terrific job by Hill helping out. Corbett knows he doesn't have numbers, but how about leaving him alone for the shot? Underneath, Quentin Thomas. North Carolina May is coming down the floor slowly. Normally, he runs much better than that. Williams wide open again with Davis on him. Melvin Scott launching. And chase down. There's the long rebound you were talking about. Off of a, a missed three. Yeah, when you take one from 22 feet out, and you don't make it, it's going to go long. May again short. And Michigan State just doing the job on the rebounds. Both ends of the floor. This hill is a big shot. He, he, hits it. he has struggled with the three in the tournament mightily, but gets that one. And uh, just remember that as he ties it at 25. Jimmy was one for 17 prior to that time from the outside. May, again, thinks he can take Namick. It spins out. May's he's tired right now. I haven't seen him this time in a long time. Look, he's getting beat down the floor. Corbett, baseline, lays it up. What guy is going to have to take a timeout? They've got a tired team on the floor right now. And Roy Williams yep. does just that. Seven unanswered for the Spartans. <laughs> Illinois, Michigan State, a Big Ten matchup. They met once this year at Michigan State, and Illinois beat them there at the Breslin Center. Or Illinois, North Carolina. Register your vote, CBSSportsLine.com. Jim, the key to this ball game so far, Michigan State, nine offensive rebounds, North Carolina two. With those nine rebounds, eight second chance points for Michigan State, just two for North Carolina, just beating them off the boards. Both teams have played man-to-man -man straight through. Working again, down low, May, and up, and too strong. And that's last touch by State. Now that's the fourth person that's guarded May in this first half. Trannon, Naiman, now Delco, Raleigh, and Davis. A look back to Austin. And Kentucky needing that three at the end of regulation. And Patrick Sparks once, twice, three times, four times. And it dropped. <laughs> and we still don't know the answer. And look at the putback. Davis had a couple of those in the overtimes. And the block by Torbett. Wow, how about that one? Look at Shannon how, Brown, the outstanding player of the regional. And look at how fresh their legs were, Jim, even at the end. Thomas was doing a brilliant job today, I think, in regard to using four different players so far on Sean May. What the object is is just to wear him down, even if they give up some points. Now it's Belco Raleigh on him in the inside, and he will be pushing, shoving, not worried about fouling out. He's just going to keep that body on him and wear him down. You mentioned this Delco Raleigh, number 50. And he's been saddled with a knee sprain and seen little action in the tournament. Average 10 minutes a game during the regular season. McCants. 
And Manuel, oh, is that going to be his third over the back on Jackie Manuel? Nysel did a good job, giving up probably about four or five inches on the play, just locked out. I don't know if any coach in the country, and statistics will prove it, that teach blocking out and rebounding any better than Tom Izzo. So that's the last we'll see of Jackie Manuel, if you would expect this half. And Jim, the other thing is blocking out even by guards. Go to ncasports.com slash Pontiac and vote for the Pontiac game changing performance of the tournament. $100,000 on the line. For the winning schools, you say they missed the front end of the one on one. And there's now Davis is back inside on May, and he'll be pushing and shoving, and he's going to be fresh. Terry. Sean Terry and Alan Anderson's foot on the line. I think he was out of bounds and stepped in, Jim. Pretty nice call by the official right on top of him. Do you see Anderson? He's out of bounds and steps back in, and that's why it didn't count. What didn't count is his rebound. Marvin Williams, jumper. Too strong. Great look how high Maurice Hager climbed for that one. It's Brown driving, gets the bucket. We talked about their ability to finish. Here comes Felton. Nine unanswered for the Spartans. A real nice job by Michigan State stopping Felton's dribble before he can penetrate into the lane. Inside, Terry puts that one down. The assist to May. First time today that May has made them pay for the double down operation. Can Anderson take the freshman? Gives it up instead. Shannon Brown lost control, and he's tied up. Arrow is going the other way. It was a nine-point run by the Spartans. It wasn't broken until May gave up the pass to Terry. Jim Nance along with Billy Packer here in St. Louis. Illinois already has won today, and Michigan State's in front of the Tar Heels. Jim, 35% field goal shooting, but when you rebound the way Michigan State is, and you get six steals compared to one for North Carolina, that offsets it. Up two points in Michigan State at this point. Again, Michigan State doing a nice job altering on Felton and on May, different players, so they're always fresh. It'll be Davis on May now. Looking for the lob, and Anderson on the hold. That's a good high-low play. Very difficult to handle both May, May and Williams in there. Anderson just giving up too much size. His first. Team foul number six. So they'll inbound underneath with 3.28 to go in the half. Fans cheering over the Illinois section as Coach Weber walks by. Yeah, right behind the Michigan State bench. Like he says, it's very difficult to go to a restaurant up in Champaign and get a decent seat yeah. anymore. Felt downtown. Yeah. Long rebound. And it's all Michigan State chasing it down. Three on one. Aker. Felt. Wow, he reached in beautifully and slapped it away. Yeah, remember Felt picked up that foul very early in the ball game and was hesitant to go for the block on a fast break attempt before but he's very good at getting that ball on the way up corner Brown three yes terrific job coming out with a solid screen inside Williams falling down it's all Spartans experience. looking for the quick release. Experience of Anderson, yep. wide open. He wants it on the other side. Brown, and he gets both corners. Terrific job by Michigan State to hit ahead. Back-to-back back back trips, two threes by Shannon Brown. Not good floor balance by North Carolina. But look at Ager and Brown. They're breaking long and they're breaking wide, so they're open. There they turn the corner again. Ager gets it back out to the top. Brown, can he do it a third time? Nope, over the top. 
Billy, you pointed it out. We've been talking about it. Offensive rebounding. Shot miss. There's an opportunity to go over and make a block that's not there. And of course, nobody blocking out from the weak side. Torbert doing the job. Davis doing the shot on this free throw. Nine offensive rebounds for the Spartans who lead by six. And here you go again. Brown with his strength and quickness staying right with Felton. Felton doesn't play against many guys this big and strong. Well, down and out, tipped up and in. I think Jawan Williams. Williams. Yeah. He's now got 12. But again, look at Michigan State breaking oh, on it. Big play by Felton. Get a hand on Somehow Torbert lands it. And Davis on his back. Now back to the line for two more. No hustle by McCants. Roy Williams beside himself on the sideline. This is a loose ball here. McCants lackadaisically goes after it. Torbett beats him with the ball. Noel called for his first. Merrick, his number one comedy, is heading for its own final four. Countdown begins for Raymond's final four new episodes right here on CBS. Davis hits the first. Had his career high 14 rebounds against Vermont, then came back with that big 20 points, 12 rebounds against uh, Duke. And in addition to that, following out Sheldon Williams in that big win, and then 15 points and 11 rebounds against Kentucky. This young guy has really stepped up in the paint for Michigan State. Hager down. You saw Hill come in. Anderson's also out. Namick's back in. Melvin Scott returns for North Carolina. And Jim, what made this play is the fact that Michigan State just wanted the ball more. And a few times they haven't stopped Felton quickly. Rod Williams. Hottest deal with the ball so far, and it's Davis. One shot and done for North Carolina. Seven rebounds for Davis already. Torbett, baseliner, got hit on the elbow. Oh, Davis tried to slam it home. Hills come, Hills come out of the break. And Felton, left hand up followed up by Noel. It's the second one today, he's fouled up. Noel had only one field goal in the first four games of the NCAAs, already with a couple of baskets in the first half. And that's North Carolina basketball there, pushing the ball up the floor, getting the break going. Timeout called. Tommy Izzo. Stop momentum. Good job by Izzo. His fourth final four in the last seven years and his team leads. Coming up singular at the half, Greg Gubble, Clark Kellogg, Seth Davis analyzing the first half. Plus, coach Bruce Weber and Darren Williams will join them live on the set. Also, the singular Naismith watch. That's all coming up on singular at the half. If you look over at that North Carolina bench, starters Manuel over there, May over there, McCants over there. Three starters sitting down. Last minute of the first half, Shannon Brown takes it to the other side of the rim. For two. He's now got ten. Picking up right where he left off in the regional. Kick. Torbert reset the 35. Wanting to go inside to Williams. With just 45 seconds to go, you would think that they would put their better shooters back in the game. How physical it's been up time. Or will it be more? They head to the locker room. Anderson pitches down low, and it's knocked out. Two tenths. They've got to do a tap play. So now look after. You've got Brown. You've got Torbert. You've got Anderson. Brown is the guy you'd like on the tap play to get the screen because he can go up so high. See if they do it for him. No, it's Torbert. And the Spartans go to the locker room with the lead. They outscored the Tar Heels 18 to 8. The final seven minutes close out the half. We've got Greg and company coming up as we continue from St. Louis on CBS. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the men's national semifinals is sponsored by Autotrader.com. DiGiorno. New Budweiser Select. And by State Farm.